Yes, absolutely. Look, I, I was counting on a certain series of things to occur. Uh, and first among those is the America Awakened Trade Works, meaning that we get back to work, meaning that we start the long road back, meaning that we don't have to hear from Secretary Mnuchin because things are good. We don't nearly have to hear about Dr. Fauci. It's just all rolling back. And this quarantine, 14-day quarantine, it, it, it's like... Holy car, it's like a civil war. I cannot believe it. And we just heard Phil Lebeau, who has been so amazing during this period, basically saying this is the worst news for the airlines. And that is the one group that has been the barometer of how things are going. Yeah. It's not good. I mean, it's, not good. it's a bit of a reality check. No, Jim, on, on, yes. on just really where we are, right? The reality of where we are. I, I can't think of the, a better word to, to use. All of the optimism... Either, you know, some acting as though the virus is gone, others trying to wish it away. The reality of the, f of the matter is that you have spikes in some big, big places like Florida. You have icy beds in Houston are near capacity now. You have big concerns uh, in some critical states for the economy. And you know what it sounds like to me? It sounds like Joe Biden. Uh, out of nowhere, Joe uh, Sleepy Joe, whatever you want to call him, hate him or like him, is the beneficiary here. And he raised more money than the president. Uh, the polls are starting to show Biden winning. And Biden is not as much a friend uh, of the stock market, obviously. What did he say? He said he'd raise corporate taxes. Takes $20 off the S&P. I mean, I think we have to start waking up to the idea that there's going to be a real race. And there's going to be a real race because COVID is back and it's worse than ever. Maybe, maybe Steph, you know, the, the, the poll out today... I believe it was New York Times, um, woke some people up in terms of thinking now, even though we're five months away, uh, about what Election Day could mean if things stand um, to, to be what the polls suggest they are. So, Steph, what are we, what are we supposed to do? OK, you, you have been, I don't know, I want to say the most optimistic uh, of my investment committee, but certainly near the top of the list. And I just wonder if now's time to yeah. have your own reality check. Woo. <laughs> Well, let's, On the let's day, just, she just say got that a new it was, job. it's healthy to take a breather. God, the questions just come that way, Jim. That's how we roll. <laughs> That's how we roll. But seriously, look, I, um, all the optimism I, I, is, well, is now the time to temper yeah. the optimism. Well, uh, like I said, it's time. Uh, maybe it's, it's healthy to take a breather. We're up 105 points since June 11th alone. That's three and a half percent. We're up 39 percent from the March low. So we certainly have seen kind of the easy money to be made. And so what, what I think is happening is you've got this. The reality is this push pull between this extreme liquidity that we've talked about endlessly and the reopen. And that is leading to better economic growth, but also higher cases. And so you've got this daily tug of war going on in the market between when the economic data comes out and it's good, you have like kind of reflation trade on. When it's not so good and you have more cases and more concerns and this latest news um, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the New York and, and New Jersey and Connecticut governors uh, really putting a little bit of a kibosh on, on things, that is, that's, a, that's disappointing. And that's when defensive growth will start to take over and outperform. I will just say this. The economy is definitely getting better. And I, that, I think, is very important. Now, maybe things will slow down as we see more restrictions get put in place. But we've talked about housing. We've talked about retail. We've talked about manufacturing, some of this, the, the regional series. And they're all showing a recovery. Yesterday's PMI, Scott, pretty good in terms of manufacturing. The new orders of 15 points. That's a leading indicator. So again, we might see a little bit of a pullback because of the data um, on the cases. But I still am encouraged that the economy economy is in place for a recovery, and liquidity is definitely a tailwind. Yeah, no, there's no doubt. Um, liquidity is a tailwind. Jim suggested today one of the reasons why, you know, I was listening to you earlier, Jim, that the reasons why the stock market keeps going up um, is because there's the Fed. There's, there's nowhere else to go to get yield. I, I, I mean, where I, else are you going to get it? It is so hard, and I, I don't want to steal the thunder at the end of the show, but I, I like what Stephanie's saying. I, I, I think there are places to go to, to be defensive. I want them to come down a little bit, but... I mean, wow, you make nothing in cash. And there are some very high quality companies whose stocks have done nothing. Um, and if they continue to go down at the pace that they're going to, you take some of that cash out of the ones that have just been big winners. This is a little bit different from what I even said this morning, because I didn't think that you would see such a rollover of everything. 
But uh, I, yield is so hard to come by. And every day, some great company cancels their suspense its dividend or its preferred. And I, I want to earn something, but cash is an asset. And it's a decent asset until we see lower prices. It's no longer trash? No, cash is not trash. <laughs> it's the most it's, not trash. it's the most maligned asset <laughs> it class. It is. It is. Uh, can I just congratulate Steph for going to a firm that I have uh, been a faithful uh, uh, user of for 25 years? Yeah. No, I'm glad you did, and um, oh, we're, we're thanks, really Jim. we're happy I, for thanks, you. Jim. We're happy Thank for you, you Steph.